Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So you know how things, uh, you know, one thing kind of leads to another, kind of leads to another. That's sort of the topic of this video. So I've been watching Peter from uh, the PGS channel um, over the last several months building a Gingery milling machine. It's been uh, very entertaining uh, to watch. You know, the guy's uh, pretty skillful with his hands. And if you've not watched those, uh, I encourage you to go check him out. Peter's a great guy. Um, entertaining videos. It sounds a little off, but um, he, he's working with what he's got and he's doing a good job. I'll put a link to his channel down below in the uh, video description. Well, anyway, as I was talking to uh, Peter in an email, he had mentioned and he was uh, watching a guy by the name of Chirpy's Tinkerings, right, who was building a Gingery dividing head. So I kind of jumped over there and was watching that. And, and uh, Chirpy's a young man. Um, I don't know where he's at, but uh, He's a pretty entertaining, pretty smart fella, and pretty resourceful, okay? And anyway, in one of uh, Chirpy's videos, he uh, had done a question and answer about his casting setup, and he was talking about his quickie burner and some of his other stuff, and that got me thinking. You know, I got like 20 gallons of used vegetable oil, and I've been meaning to get around to uh, building a, uh, a waste oil burner for a while. So, um... When I talked to Chirpy about it, he says it's David D's uh, quickie burner. It's ba basically that, and to go check him out. And uh, so I did. I looked at uh, looked at the uh, video of David D uh, and his quickie burner, and I thought, you know, I think I'm going to make that and try it out and see how it works, and uh, maybe kind of document a little bit um, that David didn't. So uh, in the description below this video, I'm going to put three links. Um, I'm going to put a link to uh, Peter's channel, PGS. Um, I encourage you to go uh, watch his stuff. I, I like it anyway. And I will put a link to Chirpy's Tinkering's channel. Um, very, very great guy. I think both of these folks are really undersubscribed um, for, for what they're doing. And I encourage you to go look at them if you would. And then finally, I'll put a link to David D's uh, video uh, in the description on the Quickie Burner. So rather than going through all the details of how the burner is built, and that sort of stuff. I'm just gonna hit some highlights along the way and then uh, I'll do some video on tuning it uh, possibly and uh, firing it up and seeing if it, we can get it to uh, burn a little bit of uh, waste vegetable oil and melt some metal. So I'm gonna bring you uh, here and show you the parts that I have and some of the stuff that I've done so far and, uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll bring you back in uh, in a minute. So in the meantime, while I get the uh, camera position, uh, here's a picture of uh, the waste vegetable oil I have, and you tell me, you think it'd be enough to uh, melt some metal? Okay, so hopefully I have everything in frame here. So essentially what we have is a T-piece um, with a plug in the end that's been drilled, a pipe nipple, comes over to a nipple, and then this, this will be the oil supply, okay? Uh, with a needle valve and then over on this end you know I have an elbow that will run into a pressure regulator and then finally a ball valve and then a quick release for for air and this is so um, I'm thinking that uh, as I want to load and unload the furnace I can uh, instead of messing with a regulator I can just uh, cut the air off with the ball valve it should stop injecting so there's a couple things that uh, I want to mention that's a little bit different in my build compared to David D's and I, uh, I would hope that you would go look at his uh, video for reference to, as what I'm doing. So I bought a package of MIG tips. Uh, there were 10 in a pack. These are uh, 25 thousandths orifice. I guess you'd call it or hole or whatever um, in them. And then I've taken it and um, now David, he, uh, he, just, he just puts his in a drill and files it down. I, you know, I have a lathe, right? So I chucked it in there. Uh, this is a 20 degree inclusive um, or 20 degree included angle that I've turned down here on the end. Um, I turned the threads off so that it would fit in this piece of quarter inch pipe. So obviously this uh, will slide in here all the way. This, this plug has been tightened down quite tight and then this will go all the way up into the, uh, into the uh, pipe and then the MIG tip gets wedged up against this hole. So kind of think of it as a needle and seat at this point. And then this is going to get soldered to this brass nipple and then 
I'll cut this off here and then I'll put it together. So, but one thing that I wanted to talk about was the parts that I was able to get. Now, you know, around me, there are a couple big box stores. There's Lowe's and Home Depot. And the nipples that I bought, if you look here, maybe I can get there. You see, those are uh, kind of thin walled, right? And larger than a quarter inch, pretty sloppy, uh, too big to, um, to solder into. So I don't know where David was getting his uh, brass, but it was a uh, better brass than I can get, at least in terms of wall thickness. So I had this idea that, well, I have some 5 16 inch pipe or tubing, copper tubing. I thought I would drill the, um, uh, the, the nipple out so that I'd have a bushing that would slide in there, right? So I could take this uh, piece of quarter inch tubing, slide it inside the 5 16 tubing, right? Get it all in position, get it flexed, and then just solder both bits as a whole. Let me just make sure I get that in frame. So I can just solder both bits as a whole and then cut it off and everything would be good. Well, the problem that I had is after I drilled that out to 5 16 uh, it made the wall thickness even thinner, right? So when I went to screw into this T, I, when I went to screw it into this T right here, you see I sheared the threads plumb off. So I was kind of back at square one and uh, knowing that uh, if I bought another uh, nipple, it was going to be pretty thin wall too. So I wasn't real sure what I was going to do. Now one, one thing that if uh, I probably could have done was just drill down into, let's say, maybe the length of the threads, 5 16 right? So that uh, I could have left a thicker, a bit of a thicker section down here. And of course, you know, I look, I, I probably gorilla it, right? You know, I'm a newbie, so mea culpa. Um, but what I decided to do was, since I had some brass, I had some half inch uh, brass, I went ahead and, and turned down the OD for a piece of uh, pipe. And threaded both ends, uh, both ends eighth inch, and then went ahead and drilled quarter inch, so that it would fit my my tube. Okay, so that's really the only thing that I've done um, that that might be a little different from David's because I couldn't find the uh, uh, the 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 uh, the brass uh, fittings uh, that were that had a heavy enough wall to give me a quarter inch ID. So. Uh, if you go to make one of these quickie burners, uh, if, it, if it's worthwhile, just keep that in mind. You may have to uh, either make your own nipple like I did, or you may have to uh, modify an existing nipple so that you can get it soldered. Um, now, I don't know if uh, silver soldering it would be, would fill more of a gap or not. I mean, you only have so much space and, you know, for the capillary action to take place, and if it's too big, I just don't think it would seal up. Um, so the only other thing I want to say about this is that now I've, you know, he, he buys all brass for this. I don't know that all brass is necessary. The only part that requires any soldering is this nipple here. So you probably could get by with uh, galvanized um, or black iron or whatever uh, eighth inch uh, fittings. I don't even think that you have to use eighth inch fittings if you... Uh, if you can figure out a way to get the MIG tip on a piece of, uh, you know, using quarter inch uh, pipe, then I don't think it would really matter. The, uh, now this whole assembly, once it's done, will go inside of a burn tube. And uh, I'm going to set the, the jet here back about, uh, about an inch inside the tube. So that's what I'm going to experiment with. So now once this is all together, David talks about tuning the... Um, tuning the uh, burner. So what happens is air rushes through this uh, MIG tip, right? And, and uh, of course, right now, you know, it's bottomed up against, it would be bottom up against the uh, plug. So we'd have to, uh, to tune this as air rushes through there. We'll back this plug out just a little bit at a time and uh, uh, allow oil to come in on, on this side here. So as the air rushes through the MIG tip, it creates a vacuum from the Venturi effect that will suck the oil in. And the idea is to atomize the oil or diesel or kerosene or whatever it is that we're trying to burn here out this side here so that we can get it to ignite. So the next time I come in, uh, I'll probably have, uh, I'm going to have the burner put together, uh, not inside the burn tube, but uh, we'll take it and we'll, we'll feed some water in the uh, oil inlet 
and some pressure, about 30 pounds uh, for the, on the uh, air pressure side, and see if we can get this to tune and, uh, and atomize. So uh, I'll see you then. Okay guys, I have it here and it's uh, put together and I've got some air leaks, uh, but I'm not worried about those right now. This is just uh, to see if the concept works. So I'm gonna open up the air valve here and I'm gonna dial in about 30 pounds. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, that's about 30 pounds. I feel air blowing out of the orifice. So I'm going to come over here to the back side and open this valve and see if we can atomize some water. Oh, got to open this valve. Forgot to open the So it's pulled it out of the bucket, and let's see if we can adjust that some, see what happens here. So it gets less and less, so. That feels atomized. And I can control the amount of uh, air coming out, I mean the uh, amount of uh, water going in. Now this is about a six foot tube uh, coiled up in a little bucket here. I'll come out, so we'll, we'll get a, a shot here. So you have to forgive me for the shaky camera business. So here's my setup. I have a bucket of water and uh, this coil right here is it's about six foot long I got it coiled into the water it runs into the needle valve the needle valve of course controls how much now we will be sucking oil through this uh, so I may have to open up the needle valve more and probably maybe have to do some more tuning but that is definitely uh, aerated there or atom atomized so uh, hopefully we can get something to burn and then of course we've got about uh, 30 pounds on the uh, gauge here so let's let's do this let's uh, again I apologize for all the crazy um, camera stuff here so let's uh, let's dial it up to oh I don't know 40 pounds or so so there's 40 pounds really no change in uh, the atomization, the more I open the uh, valve, the valve's wide open. I'm going to crank it up some more here. There, I'm up to 50 pounds. Blowing out pretty forcefully. Well, I tell you what, guys, I think there's some merit to it. Um, the next step for me will be to um, get this thing in a burn tube and, of course, get some Teflon tape on these threads so I'm not leaking and uh, whatnot. And... Uh, and uh, try it out and uh, see if we can uh, get it to uh, get it to uh, burn some oil or in our, I think I'll start out with diesel but anyway so the uh, next time I come back uh, should be in a uh, burn tube I might post up to this much so that you know what's going on and then uh, continue the next part here and a second part um, because I like to get it in a furnace and get it lit off and and uh, I'm trying not to make these videos so long so anyway, uh, tell me what you think. You think this might work? Uh, have you have any any of you guys have any experience with this quickie type uh, uh, aspirated uh, uh, oil burner or whatever you call it, Venturi effect oil burner or whatever? Um, have you got some experience or something? Let me know. So uh, again, I want to thank you for watching and taking the time to hang out with me here. And when as I'm doing crazy stuff. 
Um, next video, hopefully we'll have it in a tube and uh, in the furnace and see if we can get something lit off and go from there. Uh, again, I encourage you to watch uh, David's uh, quickie burner video. The link is down in the description below the thing. So other than that, if these uh, videos help, uh, please consider uh, subscribing or sharing with your friends or liking them. And other than that, have a blessed day.